How's it going everybody? I am DMGTO and today we're looking at a Survivor replay in the EBR90 from Rhinoceros Unicornus in the EBR90. So this vehicle here is the tier 9 French wheel vehicle. It seems incredibly quick as you can clearly see right now because it's just casually doing 85 kilometers an hour. You know, just as you do. And it also has a 90 millimeter gun with 185 penetration and 240 alpha damage. So this is actually a really solid little tank. And it has 90 penetration on CHE rounds, which have 320 alpha damage. This thing is a real... Also, it, it's able to just turn on a dime, just... Yeah. That was, in, that was in the travel mode. That was in the speed mode. He was able to just turn it on a dime like that. These vehicles just honestly blow my mind. Because if you tried that in the normal light tank, you would probably have lost half your health. And there's also a moment that's coming up here in a second where he pretty much probably would have been dead. So, just wait, wait, wait for it, wait for it. I got him in the front wheel, I think it was. Yeah, in his front drive wheel. If that had happened in a normal light tank and somebody hit your front drive wheel like that, you would have been tracked in position. You could have tried to quickly repair it. Chances are you would have been dead because everything would just immediately focus on you and try and kill you as quickly as possible. Now, a quick little thing I actually just missed there just while he was driving across this sort of just sand area. He quickly switched from travel mode into traverse mode. Now the way you can tell the difference, and pretty much he's not going to use it for the rest of the for the rest of the replay, but I want to quite, kind of quickly just point this out. So on the little diagram here, it has four wheels at the moment. So that's what happened that's what you have here whenever you're in the speed mode. Whenever you're in the traverse mode, it shows eight wheels, so four axles. So that's the, just the easy way to be able to tell which mode he's in. He's pretty much not going to use the traverse mode the rest of this game, which makes it even more amazing as just how maneuverable this vehicle actually is. Because I didn't think it was going to be as, as nippy as this, because this thing is just incredibly maneuverable. It's just able to dodge things so effectively, and just watching this thing move around, I was convinced in at certain moments before I noticed that one that one thing about the diagram in the bottom left corner. I was convinced he was switching modes like throughout this game, but then I realized, nope, this is what the speed mode handles like. What is this thing going to be like when you when you actually use the traverse mode? Because that's right there, turned on a dime. How is anybody supposed to supposed to lead that? Like in a normal light tank, there would be like a nice. Like sort of sweeping like arc to your turn. These things here, it's just instantaneous. Just you're just immediately turned. Damn, like these things here just they honestly just make me look at them. And just, I'm just looking at them, just going like how, <laughs> like how are you supposed to lead these things and actually hit them? But they do pay for this incredible just maneuverability and flexibility with incredibly low survivability. Like pretty much, if any of these tanks hit this thing, they're going to do a, a metric ton of damage. Now, one thing I'm just going to point out about this here is pretty much what Rhinoceros Unicorns is doing here is just driving back and forward and just keeping these guys lit and because they keep firing at them they're continuously lit up because the view range on this tank is pretty bad as you can see it doesn't even meet the 445 view range gap but because they're firing at them they're actually sacrificing their own camo rating which makes them easier to spot for his tank these tanks just work out so well in the game because people are going to try and kill you because they want to kill you but they can't hit you like, it's awesome. <laughs> like, they basically make your job easier by trying to shoot you, which they want to do. It's it's, in it's interesting how it works out. It's, it's pretty cool in my opinion. Now, you can see here, he's just going to make this Sheridan just look stupid. Because this Sheridan is not going to be able to hit him at all. And he's just kind of just able to traverse around it. And he only gets hit once, bat. I mean, this just shows you the kind of power that these things have. Just how quickly they're able to maneuver and avoid... Even enemy light tanks, like he's making this this Sheridan look as if it's look as if it's like a medium tank. Now he's getting kind of unlucky with his shots here, and personally, I would have been firing AP rounds here because, well, the Sheridan does have like a cardboard box over its hull, so it does kind of mess with heat rounds, which is what he was firing there. But anyway, like you can just see how quick these things look in comparison to normal light tanks. They're absolutely incredible, and. Yeah, me spotting these, like, let's go to T50, and guess it gets another bunch of spotting damage there, just from the artillery whacking that, and the love of fishing off the T20 prototype. And he's only got one heat round left, he 
sadly gets hit there by the Scooter T50, and he actually ends up with a damaged wheel, which is going to cause his mobility to be a little less good than normal, and, well, then the Scooter T50 is going to get another shot into him, which was unfortunate, and now he just realizes, yeah, not really much point in staying here, because I'm just going to end up taking damage for no good reason, and he starts falling back here towards the spawn area for the enemy team. I actually haven't mentioned, mentioned this up until this point. This is the assault mode on Ghost Town. This is the first time I've ever seen this. I didn't even know there was an assault mode in Go on Ghost Town because I have it turned off because I hate Sound River Assault so much that I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Like, there were certain other maps which I didn't mind, like Corellia, but Sound River Assault I just absolutely despised and it was just like I refused to deal with this anymore. But this here actually seems like a pretty interesting like assault mode because the enemy team has really strong positions in these like high elevated zones. But well, at the same time, it's very difficult to push across the really open plains that you have to go through in order to get towards the enemy base and actually get towards where the enemy tanks are going to be camping at. I mean, this like Scorpion G and Grill 15 are just camping back here because there's a bush there for them to use. T30 and Warp Trigger Plans are four, same thing. And then the heavy tanks and medium tanks all like, congregate around the around the city. So it's a pretty effective like defense defensive area, but it also gives the enemy or it also gives the attacking team good like attacking positions if that makes sense. I can just imagine how difficult this would be if the capture point was on the reverse side. Like can you imagine trying to attack while the other team has defensive positions like where that T110E4 is and where the IS seven is? It wouldn't work at all because it would just be completely impossible for the enemy team to actually attack. And he finishes off the tiger too. There, I got a little distracted. They're just talking about the map there for a couple, uh, for like I think it was probably like a minute or so. But he's finished off the tiger too and the Prima Victoria. And earlier on there, before the T30 died, he tried to get a shot in towards the T30, but the shot he fired, he, he fired it just after the artillery landed a hit down, which finished off the T30 just before he could get the kill on that as well. And you can see here he's on about 1600 damage and 4000 spotting damage. So, so far this has been a pretty spectacular game. And he spent most of this game pretty much at point blank range with the enemy. Like, And he's only spent like the last minute there. Spit, like, at, like relatively long range purely because he lost most of his health. And there was no real point in him like playing with fire and trying to keep a really close range. And this is one of the nice things about these vehicles. Their ability to like be flexible and not like always be a close range is really really nice. Now that not the best way of wording that if I'm honest. Their ability to be flexible and be usable in multiple in multiple I'm trying to, uh, like multiple distances like they're they're effective at close range because of their mobility and they're also effective at long range because they're really really quick aiming times and they're not bad accuracy in comparison to other light tanks so being useful in multiple different scenarios is incredibly good for these tanks. And yeah, the, the enemy artillery, or, well, no, it's not the enemy artillery, sorry. The friendly artillery kills off the T-124, allowing that game to be a win. And from memory, I think that was a 1400 XP game in the EBR-90, and that's how you ace this tank at the moment. I can't wait to get a hold of one of these. These things, like, they look like so much fun to play. They just seem like such spectacular vehicles to play, because they're so quick. They're able to just dart around the map so effectively, and it just seems like so much fun to play these tanks just in general. I mean, the 1800 damage, and just the way he just, he made the enemy Sheridan look as if it was sitting still. It honestly looked like a, like a pattern, but that, that was a Sheridan. Like, it was incredible just how quickly this tank was able to get around the Sheridan, and just completely just outduel a normal light tank. Now... One of the things like about the normal light tanks in comparison to the wheel light tanks is the normal light tanks should be able to outduel them, but only if you can hit them, because the normal light tanks accuracy is so bad that I'm not surprised that the Sheridan struggled so much to actually hit this thing, because it's so quick and so maneuverable, and it just looks like so much fun to play. I cannot wait to get one of these things. It just seems like such a joy to play, but yeah. Thanks very much to Rhinoceros Unicorns for sending this replay in. It was a joy to watch, and also seeing Ghost Town Assault Mode was really interesting as well, because I didn't even know there was an Assault Mode. I thought I thought we were going to stop making Assault Mode maps. But, yeah, this is actually a very interesting interesting game to watch, and seeing this tank makes me want to get up towards the links even faster, because right now the Tier 7 is a bit of a 
bit of a letdown after the tier 6, and I've heard the tier 8 is just so, so goddamn good. So, yeah, this line, so far, it, it's, it's looking like a really good one. So, yeah, let me know you guys think of this video in the comment section below. Thanks again to Rhinoceros Unicornus for sending this video in, or, sorry, for sending this replay in. And, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next one.